What's up guys? Today we will take a look at scripts and extensions in Automatic 11.11 and I will show you how to install and use some interesting additions to the UI. So in the Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion GitHub repo, we have a section down here where we can find the custom scripts. And when we click the link, we will see that there's a lot of different scripts that we can browse through. And to install, we just need to download um, the files in the repos and just place them in the scripts folder. And the first one I want to show you is this script here, saving steps of the sampling process. And as you can see, there's just plain code here, no file to download, but to create the file is quite easy. And I will show you this whole tutorial again on RunPod. But you can use, of course, your own local machine. It's just that I don't have a powerful GPU right now. That's why I use the cloud service. So just in case you want to follow along, you can just select a machine on the community cloud, pick the template of Stable Diffusion, select the disk space that you need and click on continue. So I already have a machine running and we click on connect and enter the Jupyter Lab. Yeah, that is basically our file management system and yeah, where we are going to place our files. So we are going to enter the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder and scripts. So this is where we are going to place our Python files. So for the first script where we need to uh, create the Python file, we can right click on the folder and go to new file and just name it steps.py. Then we can double click and we get the editor view. And then we can just copy this text by clicking on this button and paste it in. And then we save it. File, save Python file. And that's it. Then we go back to RunPod and click on the connect via HTTP button to launch our user interface. And down below, we have the script drop-down menu. You can click on script and there is our script save steps of the sampling process to files. So before we can enter a prompt, we need to define a path for the images to save. So we can just come back here, go on outputs and create a new folder that says steps. Then we right click, copy path, go back to the UI, paste it in and that should be it. So now we can try it out. Okay, it says no for no such file directory, so we just need to erase this one here, I think. Then we should be good. Yes. <laughs> so here's our final image. And we can come here, click on steps. And there's our different images step by step. So basically you can now throw them together in an image sequencer and create a nice looking time-lapse GIF. 
the next script I want to show you is called Stylepile. And this is giving you like presets of different styles that you can choose from. So let's take a look. Here we need the this file basically. You can just click on the green button, download zip, and then put the unzip it and put this file into the scripts folder. So I'm just gonna do that. Load it right here. Good. And then check again. So as you can see, it's not in here. So we need to restart. Go to settings. And restart Gradio. So and connect again. And as you can see, you have a window here that has some information about how this works. But if you go to style pile, you can see now that you have lots of options to choose from. So we can just do like 3D rendering. As you can see down here, this is all that stuff that gets added. And if you should want to edit one of these uh, presets, you can just go to Jupyter Lab, double click on Style Pile, and there you have all the different prompts that are being added to your base prompt, basically. So if you want to add another preset to the script, you can just add a line to the according section and just name it to your liking and add the keywords that you would like to use. After editing the file, we just need to restart Gradio again to see the changes in effect. Another feature that you could try is a focus on drop down menu where you can choose from different topics, kind of. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different keywords that have been added to the base prompt. So the next script I want to show you is the dynamic prompt templates script. And this one is very interesting if you're not sure what you're looking for and just want to let the machine do the work and get inspired basically. So there you see some examples of the syntax, how you can write the prompts and what you will get out in the end. So we just take our dynamic prompting py file again, download it, put it in the scripts folder, and restart radio.
So again, you should see a info window where like the basic function of the script is being displayed. But let's try out just this one that we have as, a, as an example here on the page. And to see the full effect, you would need to place the batch count to at least two. So as you can see from the results, there's a lot of combinations that we got from our prompt structure here. And to show you, it's like... So here's an apartment in autumn, then we have a cottage in spring, and a house in summer. So it takes basically one prompt style from the brackets. But the most interesting part is this wildcard feature here. So you can create a folder called wildcards and place text files with values in that uh, can be randomly used. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and name it wildcards. So we just go inside the wildcards folder and drop our text files inside that I already prepared. And as you can see there's all kinds of values here, cameras to color palettes, uh, fantasy characters, fantasy nouns, nationalities, horror nouns, and let's try it out. Uh, to use the values in the files, you need to place two underscore characters before and after the text file name. That is basically the placeholder. To save you some time creating these text files, you can find the download link in the description. So for the extensions, it works basically kind of the same as for the scripts. We can check down here in the extension section. And you even have an easier way to just run this command in the terminal of the uh, extensions folder. And the most important one is the image browser that you can just copy the URL, come back to and go to extensions, open up a terminal, write git clone and paste the URL. Hit refresh and there's the downloaded folder. So we're just gonna rename it and you're ready to use it. So if you go back here, I don't have anything here as you can see. So we just go into settings, restart radio. And there's our image browser. Click on the first page to refresh and you should have a nice overview of all the images you created. You can try this one here, inspiration. So same procedure as before, git clone the URL and wait for the download and just rename the folder. Restart Gradio and you should see the new tab in the interface. So to see some inspirational content, you have two choices here. You can either download the generated pictures 
or you can create your own by inputting a text file and uh, that's what we're gonna do by using the uh, create inspirational images script just choose a few artists that you would like to generate and uh, put the names in the text file and drag and drop it into the script After the files are generated, you should be able to see them after clicking on Get Inspiration. And there they are. And the last extension is the Artists to Study extension. So I'm gonna skip the installation part for now. And you can just basically browse through different artist generated files or different objects like house, dog, portrait. So again, lots of inspiration here. So yeah, this is how all this installation of scripts and extension works. And if you need even more input for artists, modifiers, different resources, check out my link in the description for a cheat sheet that I always use to generate my artworks. So have fun and enjoy exploring. Cheers.